You've been such a passionate defender uh, of women's rights and an advocate for women's equality, not just on social issues, but given the economic power of the potential of women around the world. But you say that we're not doing things fast enough to accelerate that progress. Who do you think in developed nations needs to be convinced most? And what are they not hearing or listening to? I think it's an issue that cuts across all economies. It's an issue for advanced economies, particularly some of them. I'll come back to that in a second. But it's also a big issue for emerging market and developing countries. In the developed economies, I would say that uh, women have made great stride, progress. Uh, they are better represented and they're more engaged in the economies, in the politics, in social life. I'll take the case of one country that I know reasonably well because we've studied it carefully, and that is Japan. Japan has a very well-educated, very bright women, and yet they are way behind relative to other women in terms of access to the labor market. For that economy where the population is aging, it would be a great pity not to recognize the contribution that women can make to the economy in all areas. And I believe that you know, it can be addressed uh, with a bit of infrastructure, because the issue of children, for instance, needs to be uh, addressed with better daycare centers, for instance. It's also a cultural issue. And it's important that the leaders of that country, for instance, recognize, acknowledge, and encourage women to access uh, the labor market. You've also talked a lot about the different leadership qualities that women bring to the table versus men, and in particular, risk, uh, especially in financial institutions. What do you think are some of the leadership qualities that women today may need to look to men to adopt? You know, I'm known to have said that there would probably not have been a Lehman Brothers if there had been more sisters together with the brothers. And uh, that's part of the issue. Uh, diversity, mixing of views, uh, debates are generally uh, positive forces and generally conducive to more stability than single gender world and uh, sort of so cohesive thinking that it begins uh, to sort of blur the picture. Added to which I think women in general uh, tend to be a little bit more risk adverse than men. And I'm not suggesting that we should eliminate risk. I think we should calibrate risk, we should price risk. Risk is part of life. But to have some who are a bit risk adverse with some who are, you know, pro-risk is actually producing a good mixture, which I think is, is a li little more conducive to stability uh, again. When it comes to leadership, um, again, it's, it's, it's the diversity resulting from the combination of men and women, which I think is, is helpful. Uh, I, I don't want to generalize and assume that uh, uh, men are more sort of A-types and, and, and women are more uh, inclusive and, and more consensual. There is a bit of that, let's face it. You know, I've, I've been around for long enough to, to conclude that there is a bit of both in, in, in the two genders, but probably um, a stronger human factor uh, with women for all sorts of historical and, and, and you know, biological reasons as well. You've been someone who has risen up the ranks uh, and built an extraordinary career in largely male-dominated fields. How has gender influenced your career, both in ways that have created unique challenges, but also opportunities for you? You spend your life with your childhood. And um, I have lived with extraordinary women, whether it was my grandmother, my mother. My father passed away when I was 16, and my mother had to just face uh, the hardship of a large family and a single income and, and a desire to make sure that we were properly brought up with a lot of culture, a lot of civilization around us, and a lot of love. But I was a witness to a woman who single-handedly uh, brought up the entire family and, and, and managed to do everything. You know, she was a horse rider, she was a teacher, she was a mother, she was um, a, a, a 
car racer. She, uh, she was a, an extraordinary role model for me. And that, I think, has been the first uh, sort of ground floor for me from which to build and from which to, uh, to have enough confidence to, to do the things that I thought were right. Yeah, you talked about success in an, in, in an interview in an, in, in an interesting way. You said, success is never complete. It's an endless combat. Each morning, one must put one's capacities to the test once again. How do you get the motivation and the energy to go to combat every single day? It comes naturally because it's life. And, and it, it's an extraordinary uh, venture and an extraordinary challenge every day. Uh, nothing, that's one, one of the things that I take from my, my father. He, he used to tell us, you know, don't take anything for granted. And I think he was right. Every day you have to just prove yourself and, 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 and convince and move forward and, and, uh, and challenge yourself all the time and doubt all the time too. What piece of advice would you give to young women today? Greet your teeth and smile. And in the face of adversity, go. They don't deserve you.